What's going on? Yep, that's right. Parts. Yeah, this is going to be a, uh, this is kind of like one of those milestone videos. I think I finally have all the parts. So I'm, I'm kind of going to do like a little run through and just kind of show you guys what I got. Uh, not all of them are here. Just some of them are at my mechanic shop. Some of them he's actually going to create like braided lines, steel braided lines, and um, some other stuff. But we'll get to that later. All right, so I guess we'll start here. Mishimoto X-Line radiator. I think it's like three times the capacity of the OEM for the, the Subaru. Uh, one thing I didn't get yet, I actually ordered a... Um, it's a cap, but it's like a temperature gauge on it. Uh, my parts guy actually ordered the same thing three months before I did, and he's still waiting. So, Mishimoto, if you see this, like, what's going on? <laughs> Is it on back order or something? I mean, it's only $60, but, you know, I'd still like to have it. I mean, I paid the money for it. So I'm just kind of waiting on that. And then this comes with, like, you know, bolts and stuff to install it. <sighs> so, yeah, that's been taking up quite a bit of chunk space right there. Uh, I guess we'll start on the floor. Um, Killer B oil pickup tube. Um, reason why this is so important is because uh, the actual pickup line is it's stronger right here where it normally breaks. It's actually bigger, so you take in more. Uh, it has more supports on it than the, the standard one that comes with the car and way more like bracing and stuff. Just It's more stronger and build better. And then this is also angled instead of flat. So if it does something does hit up here, at least you have a chance of it not blocking off, you know, the oil pickup completely. Because, you know, oil starvation, no joke. So for like $200, I recommend that to anybody. That's a Subaru. You know, it'll fit on. Um, I have, if you know my car, you know that I have temperature gauges in my ATI pod in the center. Uh, those are, I believe, Pro Sport Premium ones. Not the ones with the peak and all that, but just the uh, regular. And they're amber and white. So these are blue and red, I think. But these are the Evo ones. So they're the, like, the digital. And I label them. So water temp, oil temp, exhaust temp. Um, and my mechanic, I talked to him about wiring it up so that I can actually control when it switches colors. I was thinking using my intercooler spray tank which is not functional right now because I'm using that tank for my methanol so every time you would push it you know red blue red blue you know keep it kind of sleeper but still functional and it's already a button that exists on the car and then of course I have the sandwich bit adapter to hook it up the oil temp and, and uh, oil pressure gauges and this is for the, uh, the radiator hose for the water temp uh, I didn't really want the chrome color, but I mean, it was color coded based on car, so I guess that's what they got. So I think the one I have on now is just black, but so is my hose is black. Okay, and then we got shoot, what do you call it? I forgot already. <laughs> um, front and rear strut tower bars. These are the Cusco OS versions. So front and rear. Uh, they're not really, like, you know, too adjustable, like, the white line or whatever, but, you know, I'm not, like, some hardcore autocross guy, but I just, hell, I just kind of wanted it for the looks of it in the car, <laughs> but it's actually gonna stabilize it a little bit, which, you know, functionality and looks, so it won't be totally ricer. And then mud flaps, gotta have those, complete the look of the car. Uh, I think this is like a T3 slash T4 turbo blanket. So it should fit over my external wastegate bracket that I'm going to put on the turbo. And it's like pre-shaped. So it should fit, you know, mold around the turbo pretty good. I think this is a Pro Sport version. Um, let's see. Where is it? Oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, very hard to see. Oh, ptpturboblankets.com. So PTP, okay. I was thinking Pro Sport, I don't know. I know they sell them though, I think. And then it'll just be held together by the wire. Of course, the heart of my car, the beauty, 
it is a stock location, but that's because I'm gonna have it external waste gated through the up pipe. That's before the turbo. 11 blade turbine or compressor wheel, whatever you want to call it. Three inch inlet. That says Garrett. You know, Garrett. Uh, for me, this is overkill, which is great because, you know, later on if I do get to a full motor build, I should be able to continue to use this. You know, for other guys, they might say, you know, just go for you know, GT35 or GTX35 or 35R or whatever. The 30 is fine, you know. This is the higher end version of it, the 3076R. I could have went for the 71R. Or I could have even went GTX28, I think. 3028 or whatever. But, you know, this one will keep going. Like 500 range, 500 horsepower. So whenever I can manage that, then I can use it, utilize it, you know. Alright, now all this crap on my bed. Jesus. I spent a lot of money. <laughs> this was acquired over the course of a year. And with help through my parts guy, Jordan at Define, he helped me really, really, really stretch my money out. Like, I'm not BSing. Seriously, you need to, like, call Jordan right now. <laughs> call him, text him, message him on Facebook. He's the man. Alright, so, of course, you know, gotta keep with the red theme. Radiator hoses, top and bottom. These are pretty cool. My mechanic actually turned me on to these. Kinugawa fuel rails. They're pretty sweet because there's actually a, uh, they're like cut out. And then it's cut out near the edges, so you can run injectors a little easier. And it's all one solid piece, as opposed to some of them are screwed on. You know, it's two pieces. Uh, what's all this stuff? Um, this is the Summit Racing. I have, these two boxes are identical. Um, well, it's hard to see. It's basically a Y. It's a Y connector. I'm going to use them both as my dis, dis, la, distributor block, or distribution block for the fueling. And they're all going to be steel braided lines. I'm assuming A and fittings. Probably A and 6 fittings. I don't know why these are these are separate, but uh I'm gonna reflect the gold DEI wrap my um what do you call it? My intercooler piping, which my mechanic is actually going to use a universal kit and he's going to custom weld it and weld brackets <coughs> excuse me. Weld brackets to uh you know secure it to my car so it doesn't rattle and the right sizing will be ran in the right areas of the car so it'll flow a whole lot better and then of course with the wrapping you know keep the heat soaked down it should run even better and he's also going to uh, create like an air intake pipe weld the MAF housing on it and I guess decide on you know how far to bring it to the, the fender well where the uh, what do you call it <clears throat> the um, filter will go so because I don't really want to go full cold air intake you know I don't want to suck in water blow out smoke but I don't want to stay short ram either it's kind of like an aneurysm straw you know uh, here's the ancillary hoses I'm not even sure if I'll we'll end up using all these I don't know and actually I have a uh, <clears throat> if you look at my other videos I have a uh, Groom Speed air oil separator on there, and it's hooked together by just rubber hosing. I think my mechanic was actually talking about creating steel braided lines, or sorry, I think black nylon braided lines or something. So it's it's gonna be stronger and it's gonna clean up the look of the car. So you know, can't beat that. Uh, some cob stuff right here. Uh, what is this rear bushing? Yeah, rear bushing. If I remember right. I think it's just the front. Yeah, they're two together. So front, rear, and then double-ended adjustable or two-way adjustable short throw shifter. I want to keep the uh, the shift knob the same height, but adjust the throw. I'll, I'll leave that up to my mechanic so that, you know, it's easier and smoother to shift. So I hope that, you know, it doesn't become a problem. 
and then here's a pitch stop mount AP. Wah. I wish these came in red. I saw the pictures with red ones, but I don't know where to get it. <laughs> These are just rubber pieces. It's pretty nice, though. I think it makes the car rattle or sound a little louder, though. There's the transfer vibration, but it's stronger. I know it's on my friend's car, so it looks good for sure. <clears throat> um, these are injector dynamics. Here's the plug and play, you know, make it a little easier for install. And then here's the thousand CC injectors hiding underneath this. So, you know, flow should be even and nice. I hope they're not duds, I really do. Because, you know, I paid, what, 400 for them or 200. Uh, paid good money. <clears throat> I think this is also agency power turbo inlet, 3 inch. Uh, the hard version, so hopefully this, uh, you know, works out. <laughs> I know sometimes uh, with TGV deletes and all that and fuel rails, it's hard to get it to fit around this. Um, aftermarket fuel pressure regulator. I already put one of the block off things there because I think you're only going to run two. And then I have the gauge for it. Honestly, I kind of like the Marshall one, the one that has a black face and then yellow letters. And I think it's filled with water. I don't think this one has water in it, you know, to keep it from rattling when the engine's moving. But this one should be all right. I mean, I can always change that later, I guess. Uh, this was like $40. Uh, I guess clutch cable. I honestly don't know if I even need this. I just took it off Jordan's hands, you know. So, we'll see what my mechanic thinks. Uh, it says it right there, oil pressure kit. So, you know, to redo my oil pressure gauge stuff. And then the actual wire is, is tucked away under my car and zip-tied onto it. Which, it's been getting, like, rain and snow and all that, so I honestly don't know how good it is. I have the end piece right here, so my mechanic might have to rewire it into here. It's basically like two or three wires anyways, it's not too bad. Um, master cylinder brace. This should help with the sponginess of the car. Keeps that, uh, you know, master cylinder from moving when the, f the firewall flexes when you push the brake. And then I have uh, steel braid lines, also should help with the braking feel. And then here's the uh, the thermostat. I could have sworn I got this one as a grim speed, but I think Jordan said it was cheaper just to get the Mishimoto one. So I think it helps uh, open up the coolant faster or something. It helps the car, you know, helps it stay cooler and run better and safer. That's all I know. So I went ahead and got it. Uh, these are pretty sick right here. Okada coils, coil packs, and boots. So you have the little, little extender amplifier boots. And then you have the coil packs. So these help with like overall tune and the way the boost handles and just everything. I mean, it's totally unnecessary but really awesome to have. And my mechanic loves these babies. He's really, he's really happy when he heard I got them. Because they're usually not a thousand dollar luxury that everyone can afford uh, I know I'm always talking about how my external wastegate is a piece of crap and I know it I have a turbo smart 45 millimeter hyper gate I think it is so I think this is like the MR-V don't quote me I can't really remember I've been gathering these parts for like a year over a year Tile, 44 millimeter, comes with all the springs, comes with these really badass clamps that are better than the Turbo Smart, so it locks better. Let's see, make sure I don't lose anything. Um, okay, just fittings, more fittings. First of all, I love that it's red. I'm a sap for red, and just. Like the way 
it's built and looks. I like it better than TurboSmart a whole lot. I think the where it comes out underneath the car is even a little different, possibly, unless it's it's depends on the up pipe, which you know I have grim speed. I have the uh, up pipe slash little Y band thing for this, so it'll couple together. Hopefully, this one will sit properly or seat properly. Yep, towel for the win. Whoop. Okay, what else? Uh, so we can do this one right here. Okay, these are pretty unique too. These are Zero Lift Auto Lab Composite TGV Deletes. So they're already made deleted. Injectors go there. And if you notice, it has grooves in it. Top and bottom. And um, it's made so that you don't have to use any gaskets. Instead, you insert these rubber rings in there and that seals it off and that's it so you'll have better flow and and it'll be smoother and everything and uh, hopefully zero heat transfer so that's awesome it really is it's one of the hardest things in a turbo car is keeping the heat down okay these bad boys I'm not going to take them out, I mean, um, it, took, it was a bitch just to get them back in the box. <laughs> I pretty much took all the padding out and stuff. I don't know how they got it in there. They, like, magicianed it in there. These are uh, Fortune 500 Autos, Coilovers, the 500 series. I have the uh, rear extenders, the radial, I think radial bushings. Uh, the Swift Springs, and I guess you call them, like, the helper springs. 8K front, 6K rear. And they do come with the camber plates on the front. Not on the rear though, but you know, I don't plan on like lowering my car a lot or cambering it too much. So yeah, I know it's kinda of overkill for my car and what I want to do with it, but I put in the hours and earn the money and you know, I do what I want with it. <laughs> uh my mechanic actually sold me this. He got it off one of his friends. Uh, this originally came with a filter where this little piece is up here. But he absolutely hates that because when you're sitting at idle and the cars warm up, you can smell oil coming from your car. Or more than usual. So he's, he just, we bought this cheap cap from, I think, O'Reilly's. Popped it on there and sealed it so it's on there. I bought the brass fittings with the little beveled ends for the hosing. Uh, I didn't screw them all the way in yet because I'm going to let him do that. You know, put the little wrap around it and seal it. And then it comes with the little, uh, yeah, turbo and the reflection uh, with the little end. So there is nothing to actually, like, unscrew off of it. You screw it up and then the bottom opens up and that's how you drain the oil. This is going to be run with my air oil separator. So it should help a lot. <clears throat> Here's the, the new wastegate delete bracket. Because I don't think they really make one that would fit directly on here. So I got the universal Grim Speed one. So you just adjust it however you need to. Uh, this came with my my ATP uh, turbo. Um, this is actually supposed to be with the turbo inlet, the AP turbo inlet. Uh, here's the 3 inch one. So from the turbo inlet to the turbo. But originally I was going to run a 20G. So I have... The one that tapers down, see, from turbo inlet to turbo. Look how small that is. God damn. So glad I got a bigger turbo. God. I mean, quick spool, but like freaking top ends, nothing. <laughs> I can't even imagine the freaking, the 30. I can't even imagine it yet. It's freaking nuts. I'm so glad I upgraded <laughs> And this kit came with everything so that you could install it in the stock location, even a little, uh, like, adapter to make it go down. So we may use some of this, I'm not sure. Again, up to my mechanic. It's still braided. And then I also, I got a, well, this spacer came with the kit right there. That wasn't supposed to happen. I got too much stuff. Whoa. Okay. Um, let's 
See, I thought I had three of these. Hmm. I'm sure I'll find it. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Duh. Okay. I wasn't sure how my mechanic wanted to uh, work on my car. So I had bought gaskets just in case. Because, you know, to take off the turbo, you got turbo to down pipe, turbo to up pipe, and then this one is down pipe to cat back, I believe. Because I wasn't sure how he was going to take it off. But I actually went there today, and the way he was talking, because he asked me what headers I have, and I uh, I told him I have grim speed up pipe, grim speed cross pipe. So the little elbow joints that help hook it all together are stock. So I think he's going to port those out, port and polish, bore them out, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to need gaskets when he puts that back on. So I have actually, I actually uh, messaged Jordan and order. And whenever he sees it, I'm sure he'll go back to me and then we'll get it going. And then they got the Hella, was it Hella Supertone? Hella Horn, whatever you call it. And uh, I'll let my mechanic decide where he wants to put it, you know, where it shows out the grill. Yeah, I trust his judgment, so I want to kind of give him as much creative freedom as I can. So it's really in, you know, really an Andy car. And then here's the, what do you call it? I can't, remember, I can't even think right now. But uh, this is going to replace the plastic reservoir. So, pretty sweet. I don't see these on a lot of cars. I see this product, but I don't see them on a lot of cars. Okay, the reservoir tank for coolant and power steering. Did not need this, but I got it because uh, I just, you know, I want to clean up the car. Get rid of anything plastic. Blah. I don't know if I'll... So. Yep. Okay. Dang, did I go over everything already? That's it? That's all I have? That's all the parts? Man, I guess it is. <clears throat> so yeah, so pretty much, you know, I'm replacing my turbo, and then I'm replacing a bunch of stuff around it, kind of. And then I got extra stuff, and more extra stuff, and more extra stuff. <laughs> uh, and then again, the parts that you don't see here, um, the patch for the tuning for the flat foot shifting and launch control, uh, the fail-safe that he's going to create for my methanol system. Um, what do you call it? He's going to wire in... Where is it? He's going to wire in these gauges so that the lights change. Uh, I also asked him to install inside, in my ATI pod. Uh, there's four little holes for the pegs for the little, the little plate adapter you can put in there. I asked him to install two LEDs on the top ones and hook them in to where they flicker and light up when I'm in, in the boost, in the methanol, so you can see when it's flowing. Uh, he actually did that on, on his own personal car, and I just, I like it. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, he's going to do, like, some nylon braided lines and some steel braided lines with and fittings. Uh, he's going to weld, like, he's going to form, weld, and install intercooler piping, so it's going to be all custom. Uh, he's going to pour and polish out those elbows for my my exhaust, the manifold exhaust. And I haven't asked him about it yet, but he may even pour and polish my intake manifold a little bit. Not sure if that would help with where I'm at right now, but you know, tomorrow I'm going to head over there and We'll talk business. <laughs> and then uh, the last thing he actually showed me today is a competition clutch. He's kind of pretty much talked me into buying it. Uh, I'm going to talk with him some more tomorrow, and I probably will end up just getting it. You know, I want I want to be able to handle the power, the new power that the car will get. <clears throat> and 
and uh, my car will still run on 91 octane and methanol and I'm hoping I'm hoping to hit 400 to the wheels but you know there's no telling because I want him to still run a conservative tune you know this is a daily driver slash muscle car destroyer <laughs> so you know my motto has always been uh, sleeper on the outside ricer on the inside so you, know, you pop my hood and that's where all the goodies are you know, kind of like farm truck <laughs> street outlaws um, but he was he was talking about like a, a blended hybrid tune so I guess you know when I'm driving normal uh, it'll be like mass airflow tuning and then when I get on it it'll switch over to speed density so yeah there's a lot of cool things that we talked about and you know since I finally assembled the majority of the parts it's kind of time to you know talk about putting it all together and uh, you know I've gone over this a couple times in my head and I can't think of anything that I'm really missing I mean nothing major there might be some little detail things like gaskets or whatever but other than that you know so you know what do you guys think you know leave a comment and all that is there anything that I'm forgetting uh you know, if you don't know what's in my car now, refer back to some previous videos. But I've pretty much got the basics. You know, I've got the exhaust, I've got the methanol. I have a front mount intercooler. We're going to redo the piping. I'm going to get a bigger air intake. Uh, I have a 255 wall barrel fuel pump already installed, but not yet utilized. Uh, what else do I have? Um, those are the main things. I mean, that's... I put a bunch of little flashy engine bling stuff on there, but those are the main things. Oh yeah, I have a three bar map sensor, electronic boost controller. Um, okay, th now I think I'm I'm done. <laughs> All right, well, this is everything. I'm very psyched. Over a year in the making. Uh, hopefully one of my future videos will be of the car with all the stuff in it. Alright, well as always, stay tuned. I'm pretty much done buying all the parts. And hopefully this will all go in my car soon. Later.